Our speaker today is a body language expert and a leader in training people to persuade and to influence. She travels the country teaching corporations and associations how to hear yes from more, more easily and more often. She even trains lawyers how to pick and persuade a jury using body language. She's a frequent guest on TV interpreting the body language of criminals and politicians, and sometimes the label suits the same person. Today she's going to share with us secrets of strategic use of body language. Hold on to your hats and be ready to take lots and lots of notes because you're going to be in for some fun. But please hold your applause until after this very cool video. might have even been medicated, who seemed, in most cases, emotionless. But you said you saw a lot. Tell you what's going on behind the soundbite. She'll be watching both President Obama and Governor Romney tomorrow night to see if they can keep the sweat at bay. After years of public denials, Lance Armstrong is finally coming clean. Or Sanchez has details of the interview. We watched the interview alongside Tracy Brown, who actually raced with Armstrong on the USA Cycling program in the early 90s. Now Tracy is a body language expert. Good afternoon, good afternoon, thank you for coming. I've noticed a trend in my life lately and it goes something like this, whenever I go to a meeting like this or a party or a networking event, eventually someone will ask me, they'll say, hey Trace, what do you do for work? And I say, I'm a body language expert. And right then I get the same response from just about everyone, they, they get this, this stressed look on their face, they, they cross their arms really tight, maybe they take about a half step back. And then they say, how's my body language? <laughs> and, and to that I go, oh, you know, it's fine, but watch yourself because I know about you. <laughs> you see, just about everyone has the idea that body language can indicate what's going on in someone's mind. Few take the time to study it and fewer take the time to learn how to use it strategically, so you can persuade and influence. And we're gonna get into some of that today. So you're gonna walk out of this room significantly more powerful to get what you want than the way you walked in. And that sounds like a pretty good deal, doesn't it? Yes, yes it does. So I got into body language, strangely enough, through sports, that's me. Used to be a bike racer. I got pretty good at it. Actually, I got really good at it. But when I first started, I only knew one thing before I had even the idea that I could be good. The only thing that I knew is that I was really, really bad. Really bad, and it would be safe to say that I sucked. And I believe that young bike racers in this position are motivated differently than athletes in other sports to get good in a hurry. With all due respect to other athletes like, you know, football and basketball and baseball, those kinds of sports, if you're good enough to be on the team, but you're, if, if you're having a bad day, or maybe, maybe you're, you're just struggling, it's not that bad. You get a nice bench to sit on. You get to watch a nice game, enjoy a nice day. You probably get all the Gatorade you can drink. And if you're really lucky, you get some sunflower seeds. You know what it's like if you're a bike racer who's not quite good enough or is having a bad day? I can tell you. They leave you. They leave you behind and you've got to find your way home and I'm talking five to 50 miles on roads you don't know in the middle of nowhere, Texas, through wind and rain and heat and if it's really a bad day, snow. 
So finding myself in this spot, I said, you know what, I gotta do some things differently, do some things differently to get different results. So I started eating right, sleeping right, training right. And pretty soon, I was able to keep up. But from that day to the end of my career, I was never the strongest one in the pack. Bike racing is all about strength to weight ratio. I'm not built to be a bike racer. I'm kind of tall. I'm lean, but I'm not that lean. When I'm racing against girls that are this big around and about this tall, when the road goes uphill, guess who gets dropped first? <laughs> That's right. It was me. But I learned that strength wasn't the only game. I learned that I could learn or I could predict what my competition was going to do and I could react to it before they knew they were going to do it. And I got really good at playing that game. Really good at playing that game to the point where I started winning. And on three days, when it counted, when it really counted, on three days I won big because those were the days of the national championship. I did it not because I was stronger than anyone. I was adequately strong. I was adequately fast. I was smarter than them all because I read their body language. Now, when I got into business, I all of a sudden didn't want to create this win-lose situation. I still wanted to know my competition. And I wanted to create more of a win-win. And so we're going to get in to using some of those tools today. Like the towels are different in business, you know, than, than in bike racing. But wouldn't it be great if you could start to know what other people were thinking and answer their question before they even know they have it? They're gonna love you when that happens. So are you all ready to start to learn how to do that? Yes, you are. Okay, good. We're gonna play a game to do it. I wrote a book. It's called Body Language Confidential, right here. And I made up this game called Body Language Blix. Do we have any, do we, do we get the music, Keith? All right, <laughs> it's called Body Language Blitz, and you are gonna learn to interpret body language. You have some cards in front of you. These are your audience response cards. I have some people picked out who said they would come up and play on stage with DigiGames, who does really cool trivia games. They're a sponsor here at the show, and so we're gonna play. So if I asked you to come up, come on up, and I need one more guy, I need a guy. You wanna come up? Come on, come on, run, people, run, 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 run. All right, good deal, good deal. Pick a buzzer, you're gonna pick a buzzer. Oh, careful. <laughs> oh, we're gonna have a good time. Okay, tell me your names. Sue. Beth. Holly. Chad. All right, Chad is a brave guy. <laughs> we don't have workers comp here, Chad, be careful. All right, so here's how it's gonna work. You're gonna get your cards. They're going to they're gonna buzz in. As soon as we answer a question, they're going to buzz in and answer. You have the opportunity to change the winner's mind up here, the whoever buzzed in first. Okay, so I want you to hold up your cards. I want you to scream out the answers and try to persuade them into answering the right thing. There are prizes when we're done. Keep your own score, all right? And DigiGames is going to keep, keep your score. Keith over there is the man on a mission, and he is in charge of scores. So I don't believe there's any conspiracies going on. This is not fixed, right, Keith? No, it's not. Okay, are you ready? You ready to get going? We're going to learn a little bit about body language. Can't, okay, so, so here's what you do. All you got to do is hit your buzzer. There you go. Okay, see, he, he, he locked you out. Okay, there we go. Okay, hang on. Don't do that. You're, you're, <laughs> you're stressing Keith out. I can see him over there. Uh-oh, be careful. Now, th these are actually really cool little um, gizmos. They're wireless and super easy to set up. You can use them at your next event that you plan. Okay, everybody can see the screen. Are you ready? Okay. This is a test question. So just, just get, a, get a load of who we have here. We have Honey Boo Boo, Homer Simpson, the guys from Duck Dynasty, and the Kardashians, okay? Just look at their body language, look at what they're, what they're doing. Remember, body language recognition happens really quickly. So here's a question. The new mascot for wedding NBA should be, this is just a test question, A, the Kardashians, B, Homer Simpson, C, Honey Boo Boo, or D, the guys from Duck Dynasty. We got Chad with the answer. Tell him what you think. Tell him what you think. Hold him up. Yell it out. Let me hear it. Let me hear it. All right, Chad. What do you got, Chad? 
See, Chad says, see, and there is no official answer to this. Where's Shannon? Can someone tell Shannon, Honey Boo Boo should be the new mascot? Maybe we can get her here next year. That'd be all right. Okay, so, no? Okay, no, she's not coming. So, but did you see the wedding episode the other day on Honey Boo Boo? Yeah, I was strangely sucked in. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm a little concerned I watched it too. All right. So so you get you get how the game is gonna go. Okay, this is just a test question. Okay, you ready for the real questions? Now, everybody out there, keep your own score. Okay, keep your own score. Because I do have a no game show host would be complete without a, a Vanna. And I do have a Vanna out there in, in the audience. So all right, here we go. First thing you're gonna do, shake two people's hands. Shake two people's hands, just how you, how you normally would. Just, just introduce yourself, just, just shake their hands. Notice how it feels, notice what you get. All right, here's the question, here's the question. What's the best way to shake the bride's hand? What's the best way to, hang on, you don't know the answer yet. I tell you, we got some overzealous contestants. All right, okay, here we go. Okay, look, you gotta watch the screen. Beth is ready. She is game show ready. She's been watching Family Feud. I can tell. Okay. Okay. A, with your palm down. The best way to shake the, the, the hand of the bride. A, with your palm down. B, with your palm up. C, a two-handed shake. Or D, a dead fish shake. Go ahead. Lock in your answers. Oh, who do we got? Oh, Chad got it. Hold up the answers. Hold, <laughs> hold up the answers. Chad, Chad, what do you want? C. Chad says C. All right. The answer is... B or C, the answer is, oh yeah. <laughs> Excellent, so here's the thing with a handshake, okay? Whenever you shake someone's hand, a bride is gonna want you to be very accommodating to her, all right? She's gonna want that deep emotional connection with you. If you shake her hand and you turn your palm down, you're telling her, hey babe, I wanna be in control, okay? Maybe not the best way to do things. Shake her hand, either go for an even shake you can do. I would probably turn your palm up a little bit or go for a two-handed shake. When you go for a two-handed shake, you're, you're entering into her zone, into her sphere, and it, it can indicate that you're really sincere and that you really want things to go well. Oh, what are you doing, Chad? Oh, that's Keith, all right. All right, so questions about that? Everybody feel able to do that? Make sure that you do this when you do want a sincere connection. Politicians do this like at the grocery store when they're trying to get you to vote for them. And it, it's very insincere because you, you know they don't really care. Okay, so make sure you actually do want to create a sincere connection. All right, next up, ready? How we do with Chad here, Keith? Yes, it's definitely a height of you think, you think he has an advantage? We have complaints of cheating. Okay. <laughs> That's all right. Okay. We're going we're gonna to try. We're going to keep going. Okay, here we go. Next question is, what's the best way to shake the groom's hand? Don't answer yet. I know you don't know. Okay. A, your palm down. B, fist bump. C, a bone cruncher. Or D, a nice even shake. Hold him up. Hold him up. Chad, come on ladies, Chad's getting them all. Okay, we got a room full of D's. Chad, what do you say? The answer is A or D. The answer is A or D. <laughs> And the crowd goes wild. All right, so when you, when you use a nice even shake that says, hey, you know what? I wanna be evenly matched with you. I'm not on a power play. If you go palm down, with a groom, just turn your palm down a little bit. That says, hey, I'm in control here. And you know what? He might like that because maybe his bride's a little out of control and he needs someone who's gonna manage the situation. Okay, so you gotta understand when to use what shake. Now, you may also get a shake from other people in, in any manner like this. Like, did anyone get a palm down shake here or a palm up shake, did anyone notice? No one wants to admit it, that's okay, that's okay. So just know they're sending you information all the time. The question is, are you gonna pay attention? You either pay attention or you pay with pain, that's what my coach used to tell me. So pay attention, all right? Next up, you ready? Are you warmed up? Ladies, we need more from you up here, okay. Ready? Okay, here's a picture, who do we have here? 
Yeah, Michelle Obama. She's actually at Bethesda Naval Hospital. And this soldier is showing her some kind of figures, some kind of form. Her arms are crossed. The question is, what does Michelle's crossed arms mean? A, she's cold. B, she's comparing to what she knows. C, she's closed. Or D, she doesn't want to pay that medical bill. All right. We got a good answer. What's your answer out there? Hold them up. Yell them out. Yell them out. All right, Beth, what do you got? I said B. All right. She said B. The answer is A, B, or C. Hey, there we go. There we go. So when, when people cross their arms, and I was, talk, I was actually talking to you about this beforehand. When people cross their arms, they could be closed to what's going on. Most likely, they're comparing what you're presenting to what they know, and what they know is different. Okay? They could be cold. There's some environmental factors in there. So when you see someone who comes into your facility, because you're a program manager, right? A special event manager. And she said, bride has come in, and their friends are closed, and they're closed, and I don't know what to do, and sometimes they book, and sometimes they don't. Here's the thing. You want to get them to open up. Ultimately, they can be comparing to what they know. They can end up closed if you let them stay that way. So the best way, the best way to get them to open up is hand them something. Hand them a pen, hand them a pad of paper, hand them a flyer, hand them a drink. <laughs> Let's face it, everyone's happier with a drink in their hand. <laughs> All right? Amen. Amen. All right. Can we get some drinks up here? No, we can't. Okay. That's for later. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So is everybody able to do that? You feel like you can actually like, get people to move. You can take them on a walk. Right? You can have them put on their coat. I, had a, uh, I, I, I trained people all over the country in this. I trained a Honda dealer in Denver. He had a fella who was just haggling and haggling. And he, was, he was just like this. And the little sales guy I was training, <laughs> he had no room left on the car to, to go down. They were already losing money. So what, what he did was he took a pen. I don't have a pen up here to demonstrate. And he flicked it off his desk just accidentally and had the client pick it up. The client picked up the pen. He opened himself up, put it back on the desk, and they made a deal like that. Okay? It can really happen that way. Get people to move. Okay? Got it? All right. Next up. You ready? Get ready. Oh, who's here? Yeah, we got Lady Gaga, Blake Shelton, and Miranda Lambert. Okay? They're at the Grammys. They're at the Grammys here. And what I want you to get is, is notice the, the distance between Miranda and Lady Gaga. Do you, see, do you see what's going on? Scoot half your butt off your chair. That's how far she's trying to get away. She can't really move because they're on TV. Okay? So the question is, the body language in this picture means, A, Miranda Lambert wishes she had some face net too. Uh, B, Lady Gaga is jealous um, that she didn't win an award. Blake Shelton's planning a surprise attack. Or D, Miranda Lambert would run away if she could. Who do we got? Uh-oh. Uh-oh, we had a little malfunction. Come on, Keith. All right, that's okay. That's okay. Hang on a minute. Okay. <laughs> Chad's saying he won. I'm going to go. You, have you won one yet, Holly? Holly hasn't won one. All right, Holly, what's the answer? The audience says what? Yell it out. D. D. What do you say? You say D? All right, the answer is D. The answer is D. When people are scooting away from you, it's because you're doing something wrong. Okay, you're doing something wrong. Don't do that anymore, whatever it is, okay? Now, let's, let's go over the list of what could be wrong in this picture. Is it the face net? I don't know. Is it the look of death? Maybe. Probably, I'm thinking it's the scepter. Do you see the scepter? Yeah, scepters, they're, they're not really widely used anymore. You know, they're, they're kind of reserved for evil witches and queens in, in Disney movies. And so the take-home message from this question, the take-home message is just leave the scepter at home. Just, just leave it at home. All right. Okay, crew. Are we ready, Keith? All right. Keith says thumbs up. Okay, get ready. Here we go. Next picture. Who's here? Obama and... Um, and Kate and Michelle, okay? All right, so just take a look at what's going on. Just take a look. Can you all see okay? Yeah. 
Okay, the question is, who's the most comfortable in these pictures? A, Barack, B, Michelle, uh oh. <laughs> C, Kate. Okay, wait, hold him up, hold him up. Are you sure you want that? <laughs> I'm, gonna give, I'm gonna give this one to Sue. I'm gonna give this one to Sue. We gotta, okay, yell it out, yell it out. All right, Sue, what is it? C, clearly C. C, okay. She says, Kate, I'm gonna throw a wrench in your plans here. Actually, Barack is the most comfortable. Barack is the most comfortable. It is, Michelle and Kate are doing the fig leaf. Okay, they're doing the fig leaf. You, when you protect your private parts, it's because you're not really that comfortable where you're at. What we can't see, what we can't see is all the paparazzi from our angle, right? There's probably 50 camera guys there taking the picture. See, they're on the red carpet. It is really hard to stand and be completely open when you're being scrutinized, okay? Uh, Barack's been trained. He's been highly trained in this. It, to stand symmetrically like this isn't offensive in any culture, okay? Michelle's just along from the ride. Kate is new to this whole thing, right? Because she's kind of a new royal last three years or so. And so when you see someone doing this at a party, right, at a party you might throw, or uh, especially like you might see a groom doing this when in your office, right, you know they're uncomfortable. They're just a little uncomfortable. Do what it takes to make them comfortable. How would you get them to move out of this position? Knowing that where the body goes, the mind will follow. You want to get them out of feeling uncomfortable. Give them a drink. Very good. Chad is ready. We're in Vegas. Yeah, get them a drink. You could shake their hand. Again, you could hand them something, right? Do, yeah, put a football game on. You can do that. Absolutely. You know someone's uncomfortable. When you make them comfortable around you, they will love you. Okay? So pay attention. Pay attention differently. All right. Next up. Let's see. Oh, who do we have here? Yeah. Yeah. Tim Tebow and Lance Armstrong. Now, both of them are showing their palms. Both of them are showing their palms. You ready for the question? All right, DigiGames, are we, are we ready here? Okay, hopefully we're ready. And the question is, uh, what do Lance and Tim's upturned palms mean? A, they don't care. B, they're telling the truth. C, they're telling their truth. Or D, they're checking to see if it's raining. And, oh, who do we have? We have Holly. What? Convince her. C. C? All right. What do you think? They're telling the truth. Yeah? C, wait, wait, wait. Are you B or C, Holly? You got to commit. They're telling, I'm sorry, C. They think they're telling their truth. They're telling their truth. All right, all right. Very good. The answer is C. So point for Holly. All right. <laughs> Excellent. I love when the crowd goes wild. All right. So when people are showing you their palms, they're telling you their truth, which is not necessarily the truth. All right? Because, uh, well, Tim, he's not playing football this year. He's taking up preaching. And for him, Jesus is the way, which is fine. Like, that's great. But that's his truth. It might not be your truth. Okay? Lance's truth has changed lately. Okay? <laughs> and so when you see this, dig a little bit deeper. Dig a little bit deeper, ask a few more questions, find out if it's the truth or just their truth. When people are showing you their palms, they're trying to be transparent. Okay, they're trying to be transparent. So just a word on Lance, I did grow up with a guy uh, down in Dallas and uh, turns out, well, all of us knew what was going on, okay? And the only people he had fooled were the people outside of cycling, which is really a lot of people. So that's kind of how that all uh, rolled out. I'm sure he had some legal reasons for doing what he did this year. So. That's my two cents on that. We could talk a whole other hour about it because I knew it was in your head. <laughs> All right, next up. Oh, who's here? Yeah, we got the situation and we got Mr. Burns. Mr. Burns from The Simpsons. You all know you watch Jersey Shore. I know you do. Beth does. Yeah, she's a little ashamed. All right, I told you I watched Honey Boo Boo, so come on. Okay. So the question is, Mr. Burns, in the situations, tented fingers indicate they're sinister and up to no good. B, they like camping. C, they have ultimate confidence. Or D, they're trying to describe a triangle. Oh, Chad, get it. Chad got it first. What do we got out here? We got some A's. We got some C's. Chad, what do you think? I think it's C. Chad thinks C. 
And the answer is C, very good, very good. All right, so when people tent their fingers like this, it's a sign that they're very, very confident. They're extremely confident. Now, Mr. Burns has turned this into a little bit sinister of a move, okay? Because what does he do? He goes like this, right? Which is a little bit akin to me rubbing my hands together kind of like this. Like really slowly. Like if I did this, who wants to come up and volunteer? <laughs> All of a sudden, you go, oh, not me. <laughs> Okay, and so pay attention, pay attention to, to what you're doing. And when you're in a business negotiation, this is, or, or, or if you're speaking in front of a group, this is a great, elegant way to convey confidence, but also to become confident. Because remember, where the body goes, the mind is gonna follow. So everybody try it, just, just try it. Do this for, for a few seconds. Notice how you feel, and a few of you, probably a lot of you are gonna start to feel just a little bit Different inside, just a little bit different, okay? And I'll tell you a little bit, a little story. I, uh, I helped my boyfriend buy a car because I'm good at negotiations and persuasion and things like that. And uh, I didn't get it from the Honda dealer that I trained, okay? Let me just say that. <laughs> we went to an, a Subaru dealer and we had this little punk car, car salesman guy. He had his, uh, his super cool glasses and his extra large bottle of Mountain Dew and, and uh, like Hostess powdered donuts like for his lunch and things like that, like, like on his desk, you know? And so it, so it came time to talk about price. And I told my boyfriend this, I said, okay, just do what I do. Just do exactly what I do. So this is what we did. At a certain point when it came time for price, pricing, like the final number, the final number, we, we, we put our hands together like this and both of us leaned forward and put our elbows on his desk and, and we watched him, and he went like this. <laughs> and we had him. He would have given us anything we wanted. We got, we got what, $2,000 under, under dealer? So we kind of, we robbed him. And, and I, um, so I called the dealer and asked if they wanted me to train their staff. And, and they said, no. I said, fine, I'm going to send all my friends in. So... <laughs> So anyway, all right, so you can use that. You can use that, and it's really elegant. It's really easy to do. Give yourself a confidence boost, okay? Next up. Oh, no. <laughs> Who's here? <laughs> Tiger Woods. He's actually at his press conference here where he's admitting his indiscretions because he had a lot of them, like a couple hundred of them. And so question is, you ready? Question is, what does Tiger's body language mean? A, he's sad he got caught. B, he's sad he slept around. C, he's uh, lost his tie, he's trying to find it. And D, he's thinking about how he's going to explain himself. Let's see, we got uh, Holly, uh, convince Holly of what the answer is now. We got some A's. Holly, look, we're mixed out here. We got some A's and we got some D's. What's your answer? Definitely A. A, she says A. The answer is A or B. Very good, A or B. All right, so here's the thing. When people look down, they're getting into negative emotions. You never see someone, when you ask them, hey, how's business going? And they go, great. <laughs> Doesn't happen. Doesn't happen, okay? People look down when they get into negative emotions. Remember, where the body goes, the mind's gonna follow. So if you have a bride, if you have a groom, if you have another vendor you're contracting with and you hand them something to make them look down during your negotiation, you're putting them into any negativity that they have. Get them to look up. Don't hand them that piece of paper till later. And do I? Yeah, just hold it up like this. Isn't this great? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but you can, say, you can say, what I want you to do is take a peek at that, but consider how it's gonna look when you sign this. I mean, how's that event gonna feel for you? So you can future pace them a little bit. Does everybody know what I'm talking about when I say future pacing? Yeah, what's it gonna be like when? What's it gonna be like when you say I do and you hear the babbling brook behind you? Instead of the Jake break from the truck, because uh, you know the other venue down the street is right on the road. What do you want for your wedding? <laughs> okay, so you can do that. And actually, I work with a lot of hoteliers and a lot of event planners, and that's 
actually a situation that we have in Boulder at the at the Millennium Hotel. They 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 don't want to upgrade the hotel. The corporate doesn't want to do that. But they have an amazing patio, and there's a creek. But there's the fancy facility down the street, on the on the busy like it's it's right on a corner, and so once. The salespeople at the Millennium got that. How do you think their bookings went? Pretty well. <laughs> Pretty well because they're able to point out what's important in the sale. They're able to say, hey, you know what? We don't have a great facility, but guess what? Creek or Jake break? I don't know. It's up to you. Okay, so you can start to use that. What's it going to be like when? Next up. Oh, who's here? Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson. He's uh, scratching his chin. Okay, you ready, team? Okay. <laughs> what does Mel's body language say? A, his chin is itchy. B, he forgot something. C, he's deciding something. Or D, he believes, <laughs> he believes what he's hearing or seeing is true. Hold up your cards. Hold up your cards. Sue has to pick. Convince Sue. You are not convincing. C. C. All right, Sue, what is it? C. All right, it's C. And she's right. The answer is C. People grab their chin when they're deciding something. Okay? So watch for this. Watch for this to happen. And here's the thing. When you see this, you may not actually know what they're deciding until you ask. So ask this question. Write it down. It's the million dollar question. What's the last thing you need to know in order to make this decision now? What's the last thing you need to know in order to make this decision now? You may not have uncovered exactly what's going on for them. And this question will do it. You need to be prepared. You need to be prepared for the conversation to take a left turn. But you want to answer their real concerns. Okay, everybody got that? Okay. What's the last thing you need to know in order to make this decision now? Because nobody wants to, you know, have the be backs. I'll be back. I'll call you back. Oh my gosh, how long is that going to last? You want them to, you want to elegantly guide them towards their decision. And this will help do that. This will help do that. All right, let's see. I think, do we have one more? No, we don't. The game is over. The game is over. Keith, do we have a winner? Oh, we got to have the music when it's over, right? All right. Survey says, and this is Digi Games. All right, thank you very much. <laughs> Big hand for Keith. Oh, the winner is Chad. The winner is Chad. Very good. Now, now wait, before you leave, before you leave, I have prizes. I have prizes. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't see that, but that's okay. Oh, very good. That was a little sultry there, Sue. All right. So I have, I have copies of my book for you all. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. All right. And I have a Vanna. I have a Vanna. Now, how many of you got nine right? Anybody get, get nine right? Stand up. Stand up. We have Vanna right here. Make some noise. She's not going to give you a book unless, unless she knows you want it. Come on, Mona. Find it. All right. Go. Run, 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 run. There you go. All right. Come on, Mona. Let her know you want it. Let her know you want it bad. <laughs> Come on, she's got one more to give out. Don't quit yet. Don't quit yet. Yell and scream. Jump around. Jump around. <laughs> All right, very good. Well, she's handed that out. I'll let you know you can get your own copy of Body Language Confidential right outside after uh, we're done. And I'll tell you how you're going to do that. Look on the back of your A card. You see your A card? This is an order form. All you got to do is fill it out, give it to me, and I'll give you a book. And I only have so many out there. I came all the way from Colorado um, 
for this. And so once they're gone, they're gone. In the book, I go over 75 of the most common things you're gonna see, tell you what it means, and more importantly, what to do about it. And when you just pay attention differently, when you just have a concept of what people are doing, you can respond to them differently and get the sale. So that's outside, it's $14, you can upgrade it. Um, if you want to ebooks and videos and those order forms are outside. So fill those out now and get a book on your way out. Pretty easy. I have, ca I have changed for cash too. So let's see. Next up, who wants to know how to tell if people are lying to you? Everybody? Some of you? Only some of you. Okay. So everything that you've heard about how to detect a lie is true. Probably. I'm gonna give you another layer of the cake. Hopefully the icing of the cake. Just know that this means yes, and this means no, okay? Remember, the body can't lie. So watch for incongruencies. Things like, I would never do that. <laughs> or, you can ask me anything. I had a client try to tell me that. I said, really? What are you hiding? <laughs> okay, or, or uh, Bill Clinton. I did not have sexual relations with that woman, and I did not ask anyone to lie about it. <laughs> okay, so if, if, if you need some help, if you need some help, watch reality TV, and I know that you watch it. Reality TV, talk shows, or the news, anywhere where people are filmed candidly. Okay, if you need some help, I'll help you out. I'll send you videos of famous people lying on TV. Okay, and I, I can hear what you're saying in, in your mind. You're saying, Tracy, famous people would never lie on TV. I'm going to bust your bubble. I'm going to bust your bubble. But you got to give me your email. A couple things are going to happen. I'll send you the videos. And for two, I'll put you on my once a month newsletter mailing list just so we can keep in touch. And how you do that is, again, you take this A card. Take this A card. And it says, I want to see famous people lying on TV. Just write your email there so I can read it. If I can't read it, you're not going to get your videos. That's just how it is. And uh, give it to me when we're done. I'm going to be outside. And I will send you those videos once I get home, probably tomorrow, uh, worst case, Friday. Okay? So you can do that. Now, Shannon asked me to wrap up. A lot of what I do is, is get a little more down and dirty uh, with body language for persuasion. And I teach people how to talk their way out of a traffic ticket when they get pulled over. And so I thought it'd be pretty fun just to wrap up with this, okay? So you're driving along, minding your own business, when suddenly you see flashing lights behind you. Whoop, you're busted. Oh, this is going to go automatically on me. <laughs> you're busted. Most cops can be persuaded. Like the decision to give you a ticket hasn't been determined yet. Okay? So it's up to you to do the right things, to pay attention differently so that you can get off scot-free. Because remember, cops are people too. Now, I know this because I get pulled over a lot. A lot. I've been pulled over nine times in the past three years. And so what follows is my system for getting out of a ticket. Now, I was running 100% of, of getting out. Now I'm down to 87% uh, from last fall. <laughs> but... I, I want to give, give you the tools so that you can create a nice high winning percentage for yourself too because you're going to be pulled over sometime. It is guaranteed. It is absolutely guaranteed. So listen up and listen good and thank me later when you want to thank me. Remember, I like chocolate and shiny things. And so you got to understand you're always communicating. You're never not communicating. So just for simplicity, let's talk about how communication really happens. 55% of your communication is your physiology or your body language. It's really what you're doing with your arms and limbs. 38% is tonality, because it's not what you said, it's how you said it. Right, how many of you have been on the losing end of that one lately? My boyfriend has. All right, which leaves a little bitty 7% for your words. So really the joke's on us, because we run around thinking what we have to say is really important and it's just not. So in light of that, I've put together a few rules and tips and tricks so you can get off scot-free next time you get pulled over. Rule number one, roll the windows down. Roll down the front window, roll down the back window, turn on the dome light if it's dark. Let them see in. They don't know if you've got a back seat full of guns or weapons of mass destruction. 
Rule number two, this is optional. Have a cute animal with you at all times. This is my dog, Journey. I actually got out of a ticket in the Panhandle of Texas because the cop thought she was cute. The first thing he said to me was, that is a beautiful animal. I talked to him for so long about the dog, I think he forgot why he pulled me over and let me go. If you don't have a dog, try a cute kid. It might work the same. I don't have proof of this. I'm just thinking, my, this is my niece, Blakely. She is just cute as a button. Next up, do not ask if they smell bacon or make Boy Scout jokes like, when are they going to get the, their Eagle Scout award? While tempting, these will certainly land you in jail, and uh, you'll definitely get, get a ticket to go along with it. So watch your mouth, okay? Next up, oh, next up, keep your hands on the steering wheel. Our inclination is to like rustle through your purse and your glove box. Don't do that. They think you're looking for a gun. Okay? They think you're pulling a gun. Make yourself seem safe. Keep your hands on the steering wheel. Wait till you're asked. Wait till you're asked to retrieve your documents and say, "Hey, they're in my purse and in my glove box. Is it okay if I get them from there?" It tells them exactly where your hands are going to go. So they're going to be 100% comfortable with you, okay? Now is the time you want to use your tonality to paint the picture that you want. Remember, words lead to feelings, and the feelings you create at this moment are more important than anything they think they've seen you do or any number they've seen on a radar gun. And you better get ready because there's some questions going to be coming down the pipe really quickly. So be careful how you answer, and the questions go like this. Where are you going? You know how fast you were going? And that's when you say, oh, you know, nodding your head, yes. It felt like I was just poking along. <laughs> Back to Boulder. You're painting a picture in his mind. Attention to detail at this moment can make the difference between you getting a ticket and between you going off scot-free. So don't take chances. Be deliberate with what you do. And remember... If all else fails, if nothing's working, just cry, <laughs> just cry. So if, if, I saw some of you take a video of that, if you want to see a video of that, go to my uh, website, bodylanguagetrainer.com, and there's a free video just for uh, reminders on there, bodylanguagetrainer.com. You can also find me on Facebook, at Body Language Speaker, if you liked our game today, if you like celebrity body language, I decode it just about every day. And some really neat conversations get started up about your favorite celebrities. So, and I'm going to wrap it up with one more idea. Remember, excuses are the tools that allow you to deny the truth and destroy opportunity. Get good at this. I want to be a resource for you. I'm going to be outside. I look forward to talking with you soon. Thank you very much. Oh, one more thing. If you have your ABC cards, can you pass these to the center? I would like these. And obviously, if you want the A card to turn it into me, that's okay. Just pass everything left to the center. I'd like to use them again. Thanks.